portray. And here's where I want to ask you a question about Trudeau in particular. The alliance between the Trudeau government and Jagmeet Singh. And I ask you about this, this gentleman because he is clearly a secessionist. He clearly has very dangerous politics. And you on your Twitter feed uh, reposted somebody today uh, saying that this is a man who hasn't even condemned the open calls for the breakup of the Indian Union. So how do you expect people to respond to, uh, to this? And uh, Justin Trudeau is dependent on Jagmeet Singh for numbers. And therefore, there's ignorance, but there's also what the Indian foreign minister has called vote bank politics. Well, they're, they're absolutely true. I mean, um, uh, Mr. Trudeau uh, lives or dies uh, with the support or lack of it from Mr. Jagmeet Singh. And I have seen Jagmeet's um, videos who are no longer that are no longer available on YouTube, where he spoke at six sovereignty conferences. Uh, and obviously, um, I mean, Everybody believes, I mean, most people believe that uh, that he's a Khalistani. It took him a long time to denounce Talwinder Parmar, the Air India uh, bomber. Um, and so, you know, if Mr. Trudeau is dependent on his support, one can draw one's own conclusions. Obviously, uh, he people will believe that he is going to be soft on Sikh extremism in British Columbia. You know, what do you that. believe? What do you what do you well, think of Jagmeet Singh? Well, I think Jagmeet Singh, um, perhaps, you know, I have no first hand knowledge. I've only seen his videos. I remember one of his supporters and close friends in a documentary said that, you know, we actually went into Canadian politics and in the, the, he was talking about Jagmeet to litigate 1984. Now, that should tell you something. You're sitting millions of miles, you know, thousands of miles away, and you go into Canadian politics to litigate 1984. Now, if, if that's true, that should speak volumes about uh, what's happening. Can, can, can I ask you, though, you said this ignorance, there's some memory loss, some of it is politicians being too weak because they're dependent on folks like Jagmeet Singh. But when Indians see, for example, uh, a tableau, uh, that is celebrating the assassination of Indira Gandhi, right? Uh, when we see posters that actually call for diplomats to be to, to, to be killed, uh, kill India posters, that's what they were called. Uh, when we see Bhindran Bale uh, sort of pictures at, at, at some gurdwaras, though I'm, I'm intrigued to see in the last few days, some gurdwaras have begun to take down some of these images. What should we, when we see a Gur Patwan Pannu, Nijjar's lawyer, uh, making two open calls, one against Hindus of Canada and two calling for the political death of the Indian Prime Minister. Uh, you know, Trudeau's government can stop all this because this is not free speech. This is open incitement to violence. It's hate speech. No, absolutely. I, I, I cannot agree with you more. I think that uh, characters like Mr. Pannu, if he's not a Canadian citizen, I think the government of Canada needs to show some backbone and not allow him into this country after the kind of speech he made, um, extolling Canadians to, you know, expel Hindus out of, out of, um, out of Canada. Um, my worry is um, that the lot of immigrants coming from all over the world into Canada and the Canadian politicians don't have the courage to say to these immigrants, you know, become Canadian, give up your tribal wars or whatever you bring with you. Uh, and uh, and otherwise, in the next 50 to 100 years, Canada will be a battleground for all the tribal wars of the world. And I'm not suggesting that there is a tribal war in India because I, I mean, in Punjab, uh, it's absolutely peaceful um, uh, other than, you know, whatever incidents are happening with drones and the like from across the border. Here's 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 my question, right? Uh, you say Canada should show some backbone and and stop Gurpatwan Pannu, who's an American citizen, from coming into Canada and being able to organize these events. Yet every time this has been raised by India with Justin Trudeau, it's been raised several times. Canadian diplomats have been summoned more times in, in, in by the foreign ministry in Delhi than Pakistani diplomats in the last year. And that should tell you something. The, the description that was once used for Pakistan, uh, a safe haven for terrorists, has been used for Canada. My question to you is this. Is the Trudeau government's policy basically that as long as you don't inflict terror on canadians go ahead and inflict it 
go ahead and foment it in another country, we're okay. And when I say that, I'm immediately reminded that, that the majority of those who died in Air India 1 and 2, the Kanishka bombing, were Canadian citizens. They may have been brown, but they were, they were Canadian citizens. So this position itself is very difficult to understand. Why is Canada taking this position? Well, it's difficult to understand for me. Um, I have said many times that it is appropriate for Mr. Trudeau and other politicians to not always take uh, refuge under the rubric of freedom of expression. Uh, because, they, you know, you can say to uh, no, no politician has said what I'm going to tell you. They should say to the Khalistani extremists and propagandists who want to dismember in India sitting in uh, Canada, look, you have the right of freedom of expression, but we tell you that we support an ally, a democratic India, and we support its uh, its uh, territorial integrity. We don't like what you're doing. Nobody has said that. And that is where I think that is what they need to do. And I've been saying that quite openly. Now, let's come to the geopolitics of it. We had the um, the ambassador from the United States to Canada go on record to say that some of the intel came from the Five Eyes, the intelligence sharing group. The Americans are calling upon the Indians to cooperate with Canada. That's all on record. Behind the scenes, many people believe the Americans will mediate, uh, help de-escalate. But what does de-escalation look like? Because if, if Trudeau doesn't place evidence in public domain, People are going to say, why did you make this allegation? You jeopardize the relationship. If he pleases it, I don't see India saying, oh, yeah, that's right. India did it. India has already categorically denied this. What is the way out of this? Is there a way out of this? I, I think I think for a while there's going to be a stalemate um, in the relationship. Um, when, the, when the evidence comes out, we'll see where it goes. Um, and then people can reassess. My worry, however, is that the government of India has no trust in Mr. Trudeau's ability to isolate himself from the Khalistani elements who've been around him ever since his leadership. Um, so that's a problem. And on the other hand, Mr. Trudeau is fond of uh, talking about democracy and there is a democratic deficit on the Indian side in the eyes of uh, liberal Democrats on and, and on this side of the world world. So I think that, that there is going to be a problem. What I have said, and that's not that this is my wish, I, I have no dog in the race in terms of politics right now, I'm out of it. Uh, but one might have to look beyond the current regimes uh, in both countries for the relationship to improve. Well, I mean, I don't know how that happens, uh, you know, and, 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 you know, you say, I like, I mean, I think we don't know what's going to happen in Canadian politics, but there's no I have, Indian... I have no idea. Uh, but let, but let, let me let me say, when Canada wanted to be tough, for example, in its truckers agitation, a number of Indians sort of smarmily, sort of snarkily said on Twitter, oh, maybe we should uh, tell Canada to uh, show some democratic rights and uh, foster civil liberties. So there's a lot of, you know, Indians see the same issues very differently from the way the West sees India. So I just wanted to underline that, right? Well, that's uh, natural. Yes. My question is this. If you think that there's no immediate sort of rapprochement that you can look at, uh, what happens to Justin Trudeau? I think there's a lot of curiosity because from what we see here, his ratings are quite down. His opposition main challenger seems to be doing quite well. Uh, is this hurting him politically? Is this helping him politically in a domestic context? Oh, I think I think um, there is a perception in Canada that he's mishandled the situation. Um, um, I've spoken to a few former politicians. Uh, uh, that, you know, they're not going to say that publicly, but they believe that uh, that uh, he has um, dealt with this in less than responsible fashion. That's not to condone if it, if India has done what it's alleged to have done, but but there's also a double standard on that score, as as you've mentioned, um, and uh, and we understand that. But you know, as I said. Countries that have national interests, they don't have permanent principles. Yeah, I think the consensus on both sides, the one thing that Indians and Canadians could probably agree on right now 
is that things are probably going to get a lot worse before they get better. Uh, I don't think we've seen the last of this this story yet. Ujjal Dasanj, thank you uh, for sharing your thank insights. You. It's very early in the morning. We're going to let you go. You're much in demand uh, on Indian and Canadian television right now to make sense of this situation. Mr. Dasanj himself has been attacked by extremists for always calling out uh, sort of the, the secessionists and extremists in Canada. And we thank you for that, Mr. Dasanj. Take care and thank you for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you.